beginning of the day of Brahma. But you know, for, for most archaeologists and anthropologists today, this is this is completely impossible. Mm. Um, for a paper that I later presented at a major international conference on the history of archaeology, uh, I was able to get access to the collection uh, and we were able to photograph and study some of the artifacts. Uh, here are some photographs of the next two drawings uh, that Rotot made in his original reports early in the 20th century. You know, if you go to the museum today, you won't see the, these artifacts. You know, they're not displayed to the public. If you'd gone to the museum, perhaps in the year 1910, you would have seen these artifacts displayed in the main exhibition hall of the museum with labels indicating an age of 30 million years. But after Rutot died, his colleagues in the museum thought, we can't have this, no, everybody knows human beings couldn't have existed 30 million years ago. So they put the collection away, and also they destroyed a lot of the original documentation that went along with this collection, but it still is there. It would be very difficult for you to see them, but you know, I have seen them myself. <clears throat> Now here's a case I found really fascinating. This is the case of the California gold mine discoveries. In the middle of the 19th century, gold was discovered in California and miners came from all around the world to get the gold. Uh, they came to places like Table Mountain in the Sierra Nevada mountains. And to get the gold, the miners dug tunnels through solid rock. Uh, and deep inside these tunnels, the miners found human skeletons and human artifacts, hundreds of them, not just in one place, but in many dozens of places in the gold mining region. Uh, for example, they found many of these stone mortars and pestles. Uh, this particular uh, set uh, was found 1,500 feet from the mouth of the tunnel, you know, 1,500 feet in a tunnel, deep in a tunnel, drilled into solid rock. Uh, that stone mortar and pestle were found by a miner, but some of the discoveries were made by professional scientists, such as uh, Clarence King of the United States Geological Survey. Now, what makes these discoveries so interesting is they were found in solid rock belonging to the early part of the geological period called the Eocene, which means these objects would be about 50 million years old. Now, as I said, a Vedic archaeologist wouldn't have any problem with that, but you know, for most archaeologists today, it would be completely out of the question. You know, 50 million years ago is before the time of the first apes and monkeys, according to uh, their perhaps mistaken picture of the history of life on Earth. <clears throat> Where do we get this date of 50 million years? <clears throat> A little technical information. Uh, this is the bedrock here, and these depressions are river channels that were carved into the rock by rivers that ran during the early Eocene. Uh, that's been determined by the, the Eocene nature of the plant and animal fossils that are found in the old river gravels, which are now compacted into solid rock. Uh, that, that age has also been confirmed by uh, some other methods. Over the old river deposits are deposits of volcanic ash huge deposits of volcanic ash that are now solidified to rock-hard consistency. Uh, these have been dated using the uh, potassium argon method, and the ages range from 20 to 33 million years, covering the older uh, river channel deposits. And then on top, you've got lava flows, basalt, uh, two, over 200 feet thick, dated at 9 million years using the potassium argon method. And these deposits used to extend uh, across the whole area, but then later new rivers formed and they carved out new channels leaving you know, Table Mountain here. And uh, the human 
human bones and artifacts were found in these old Eocene river deposits. <clears throat> these discoveries were reported to the scientific world by Dr. J.D. Whitney, who was the chief government geologist of California. His report was published by Harvard University in the year 1880. But you know, we don't hear very much about these discoveries today due to this process of knowledge filtration that I mentioned in the beginning. And uh, this is the scientist most responsible for the knowledge filtering in this particular case. This is Dr. William B. Holmes. He was a physical anthropologist working at the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. And he said, if Dr. Whitney had understood the theory of human evolution, he wouldn't have announced those conclusions that he did in that report. In other words, if the facts did not go along with the theory, then the facts had to be put aside and the person who reported them had to be discredited, and that's uh, exactly what happened. <clears throat> A couple of years ago, I had my own personal experience of the knowledge filtering process in connection with these California gold mine discoveries. I was a consultant for an NBC television special called The Mysterious Origins of Man. The host of the show was you know, the famous American actor Charlton Heston. And I appeared on that show, as did my co-author uh, Richard Thompson. And uh, the show was largely based on material from our book, Forbidden Archaeology, although the show did include you know, the, the research of other, others as well. Uh, when they were filming this program, I told the producers they should go to the Phoebe Hearst Museum of Anthropology at the University of California at Berkeley, because I knew that some of the 50 million year old artifacts from the California gold mines are still being kept in that museum today. So when the producers went there, the museum officials told them, well, you know, you're making a television program, you probably have a very tight deadline, we just wouldn't have time to have our workers search through our collections and bring these artifacts out for you. So then the producer said, well, no, we've got six months you know, to do the program. Could you please have a look? And then the museum official said, well, we have another problem. We have a very tight budget. We just would not be able to afford to pay our staff the overtime that would be necessary for them to do this work. So then the producer said, well, money's not a problem either. We'll pay the overtime salaries for the workers. We'll pay for all the expenses. And then finally, the museum official just said, no, go away. You know, you're not going to see these things. So, nevertheless, we were able to use photographs of these artifacts that were taken by Whitney in the 19th century, and the show did go on. Uh, but when... When Darwinist scientists in America found out that NBC was going to show an anti-Darwin program at prime time on Sunday evening when lots of innocent children you know, would still be up, <laughs> uh, they went ballistic. You know, they, they, they tried to stop NBC from showing the program. They weren't successful. Uh, and as, as a matter of fact, the program was so popular that NBC decided to show it again which totally infuriated these people. So again, they tried to stop NBC. This time they started an internet letter writing campaign. Scientists from all over the world were invited to write letters to the chairman of the General Electric Company, which owns the NBC television network, asking him to instruct NBC not to show that program again. You know, because in their words, it would have destroyed everything they were trying to accomplish in the education system where they have a complete monopoly. So it really infuriated them that you know, children in school would hear one thing and then go back and on television see something else. That, that made them mad. Uh, the pressure campaign didn't work. NBC did show the program again as, and, as a matter of fact, made publicity telling the American people, watch the, sci watch the program, you know, these scientists don't want you to see. <laughs> so that made them even more angry. I mean, especially since they knew I had something to do with this whole thing. Yeah. So then they went to the American government. 
uh, they went to the Federal Communications Commission, which is the agency of the United States government that controls the uh, television 